14 bisexual advocates gathered at the US Department of Health and Human Services on a September day in 2022. We were a small delegation compared to the 100 uh, who attended the first White House Bisexual Community Policy Briefing back in 2015. Smaller still than the White House gathering in 2016 that celebrated bisexual culture and community. There were, however, more of us in attendance that day than there had been in the cumulative years from 2017 to 2021. As far as I can tell, no one was invited to DC to discuss federal policy related to bisexuality during the Trump administration. You may be wondering why it's important for people in the federal government to spend time meeting with representatives from the bisexual community. Based on the considerable effort it took for bisexual advocates to get 14 people into a room with representatives from the Biden administration, I'm guessing government officials weren't sure why they should be paying attention to bisexuals either. So, let me share with you a few things about bisexuality. First, there are a lot of bisexuals. According to the most recent Gallup poll, 4% of US adults are bisexual. That's over 13 million people. Surprising to many people is that there are more bisexuals than lesbians and gay men combined. So bisexuals are the majority of the LGBTQ population. Bisexuals are extremely diverse. The, with higher rates of bisexuality among people of color and transgender people compared with white and cisgender folks. It feels like a pretty heterogeneous group to me, and I'm a biracial Asian American Jewish Buddhist bisexual. <laughs> We're a growing population with 15% of Gen Z adults being bisexual compared to 6% of millennials and less than 2% of Gen X and boomers. Sadly, this large, growing, and diverse population is at risk for physical and mental health problems. Compared with other sexual orientations, bisexuals experience higher levels of depression, anxiety, suicidality, substance use, sexually transmitted infections, and overall psychological well-being. It even affects our physical health, with bisexuals having higher cholesterol, liver disease, and arthritis than heterosexuals. Why is it that bisexuals have poor physical and psychological health? Well, not only are bisexual people treated badly because we're not heterosexual, on top of that, we face bisexual specific challenges. And much like racism, repeated exposure to stress related to stigma has significant negative consequences. But what's so stressful about being bisexual? Violence, poverty, and homelessness are all elevated among bisexual people. Intimate partner violence is particularly notable, experienced by 61% of bisexual women and 37% of bisexual men, higher rates than any other sexual orientation. Bisexual people are invisible or minimized in policies, media, and education. You would never know that Pride was founded by a bisexual woman, Brenda Howard, based on the inattention to bisexuality during the month of June. And when we are represented, bisexual people are often portrayed as confused, promiscuous, untrustworthy attention seekers who are really closeted gays. Just like lesbian and gay people, Bisexuals are rejected by family and friends, but we also suffer exclusion from, and microaggressions from the LGBTQ community and from non-bisexual partners. These experiences contribute to internalized stress, all of which is associated with physical and mental health problems. So this is the situation. There are a lot of bisexual people who are at elevated risk for violence, stigma, isolation, and a whole host 
of physical and mental health problems. What exactly can the federal government do about it? First, assure that bisexual expertise is embedded into governmental systems so that when issues emerge that affect bisexual people in distinct ways, bisexual expertise is at the table. For example, having knowledge about bisexuality on the National Vaccine Advisory Committee may have averted some of the unique barriers bisexual men faced when trying to access the MPOX vaccine. Bisexuality is especially prevalent among women and people of color. So it would make sense to have bisexual representation on the Advisory Committee for Women's Services and the National Advisory Com Council on Minority Health and Health Disparities. Beyond representation, it's important for government employees and appointees who deal with civil rights, housing, substance use, and any of the other factors related to bisexual health disparities to understand how these issues intersect with bisexuality. Funding for research and services should be adequate to address the size and level of need of the bisexual population. Although bisexuals comprise over half of the LGBTQ community and have considerable health disparities, less than 1% of non-governmental funding for LGBTQ populations goes to, po goes to programs for bisexual people. Federal grants for health research have improved in recent years, but still only 17% of NIH funding for studies of sexual and gender minority health went to bisexual specific projects. And programs designed for LGBTQ people broadly do not necessarily reach bisexuals, who are likely to be in mixed gender relationships and disconnected from LGBTQ community. Targeted efforts are needed and that takes resources. Service delivery by federally funded agencies needs to be affirming and responsive to the needs of bisexual people. That includes psychotherapy, healthcare, and support for victims of domestic violence. Lack of knowledgeable and competent health and mental health services further exacerbates health disparities. The federal government gathers a lot of information about the American public. Data should be collected in such a way that bisexual people can be examined as a distinct group. Disaggregating mental health data detects ways in which lesbians and gay men are doing better than we thought and bisexual people are worse off than we knew. So not only do we have a clearer idea of what bisexual people are experiencing, we also have more accurate information about lesbian, gay, and heterosexual people. I was encouraged to see that literally yesterday, the White House issued a report that recommended asking about sexual orientation consistent with this approach, which is a great step. In order to accomplish these goals of bi expertise, funding services, and data collection, it's important to have coordination across federal agencies and with bisexual community leadership, researchers, and advocates. Ideally, the federal government will initiate these efforts because as many bisexuals as there are, there is not a single person in the world whose job it is to advocate specifically for bisexual people. We're coordinating efforts for advocacy through Bi Plus Organizing US, a collection of very part-time volunteers. So we're asking our government to step up, reach out, and partner with us. Together we can work toward the day when 13 million bisexual Americans feel confident that our government cares about and supports our health.